The snake lady is here. Spiking bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear with you. Checking out Marathi, the crazy new miniature for <laughs> crazy cool new miniature for Age of Sigmar for the Daughters of Cain. This is a this is a pretty interesting little offering here. This is the first time they've kind of done a larger two part kind of miniature with another miniature kind of inside of it because we all know these are valued about you know 35 40 bucks or so depending on which one it is and coming out with a semi larger one here this is on a hundred mil round base whereas this one's on 40 so it kind of makes sense in that regard once you start price pointing out this is a uh, hundred thirty but it's probably about the same and we're gonna put it together this is an unboxing and build but I'm imagining just you know thinking off the bat and there isn't a little thing right here that says this is at a particular scale i'm imagining it is about this big so that's going to put it around like kind of the lord celestin size here <laughs> so that's going to be interesting to see but it looks like it has a very detailed base when it comes to that and i'm really kind of stoked to see how they did this design work with all these curves and everything in here around uh this wing why this wing is like straight out and then it's got all the curved tail and stuff. So that could definitely lead us, give us some clues perhaps to some more uh, design abilities that they have that could kind of trickle down into newer miniatures, maybe even for Fulgrim. Because remember, Fulgrim's on that uh, serpentine kind of body as well. So who knows? Maybe this is a precursor for some cool stuff we could see in the future here, design-wise there. And then you get the collector's box once you open it up to kind of see how it all goes together her with her, with her kind of metal and um leather form and then the crazy i guess that's a shadow king a shadow queen and then the high oracle of cain transformed transfigured form right there so opening all of that up we get the instruction pamphlets two big sprues there and there's the 100 mil and the 40 mil base that we Kind of expected at this point, I suppose, after reading over anything. Everything there, kind of seeing how it goes. Remember, Alarial, I guess, is the only other thing we have to kind of compare this to in Age of Sigmar. Maybe besides the Lord Celestin. Lord Celestin's 80, Alarial's uh, 130. But Alarial's a lot bigger. It's on a much bigger base. And it is all one figure. So, um, gonna gonna definitely size this up and compare it to some of the other existing miniatures that are out there. And kind of get an idea for of the size and everything because you can have something in your hand but that doesn't necessarily tell you how big it is on the tabletop you know what i mean so here's the instructions here and as we're kind of flipping through it you can see the the high oracle well i guess it's the other way around i thought hmm okay so that's just shadow queen that's a high oracle okay potato potato but this is seems like a pretty straightforward build here it does have a really cool kind of uh texture base they seem to be doing that more and more we saw it with um recently with Eisenhorn, even though he was in fine cast, you know, and we're really starting to see it with a lot of the miniatures out there. They just kind of lock into a base, all of the shade spire minis, all that stuff looks great with their, with their special bases, specialized base. And then you've got the assembly of the body itself, which looks to be a front and back with the cape on the bottom and then her pinions, the head, her hair is three parts. That's ambitious, but it gives you that really rich depth and helps to hide the, some of those mold lines in a lot of cases there which uh, may, may explain a lot. And then the head assembly, huh, the head's all in one piece, that's cool. We'll check that out here shortly. Those go together and then her outstretched arm uh, that is holding her weapon there. I forgot what that thing is called, it's like the heart seeker. I believe it is the heart seeker. <laughs> a heart render, that's what it is. Okay, I had to think about it. So the heart render. So that's easy. That's the easy build right there. And then of course during game can become transfigured. So that is gonna get you this and even more texturization here. Look at look at all this craziness. It's a little kind of stair stairway with some folks that have been turned to stone there and some steps in it. Now when it comes to stuff like this, it's always good if you want to texture the rest of this paint, you can use the G Dub Citadel texture paint. To get in there and kind of match it up or you can use some pumice from vallejo to help match that texture there so it all kind of comes together for the rest of it this is what i was curious about it looks 
like the serpentine coil goes together in multiple parts in left and right halves, but it's gonna give you that really organic kind of swirl there that's very hard to do. It's very hard to, to manufacture circles and curves and things, and that's really cool to see that they were so very, very careful and very detail oriented on this, and then how it interfaces with that uh, statue, it looks like, which goes together, or that pillar, which is two parts, okay, I'm digging it. So then it kind of, swooshes around it and locks in with these two nubs on what looks to be this one pinion piece and then that's how it kind of goes together very similar to what, you, what we saw on 40k with the trigon although a little bit more seamless in my opinion right there and then from halfway up you're going to attach the other the other half that's going to interface probably with the body yeah there it is right there so those two pieces are going to go together and kind of form up the bottom torso and then you're going to start attaching all those parts there and it looks like she has two different arms one holding a heart one open open handed i guess on her back it's gonna have oh that's more of the interface with the scales once you get all that done it's going to the single wing oh so here's how they curve the wing it's three different pieces okay that makes more sense i like that and then the head itself again is a lot of parts here the snakes on the end of each of the hair stems it looks like in each individual <laughs> snake has a top half and a bottom half so that's going to be a lot more detailed so they'll yeah with their mouths open and everything okay i can understand that 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 makes a lot of sense and then overall it looks like the whole assembly locks into the base right here on this one vertical piece and that is oh no and it leans back right here there's one little spot probably a divot on the tail that is it little paint guide here there's also one in the white dwarf this week or this month rather neat okay and there's the rules we're not really going to talk about that well if we get a uh, battle tome tips and tricks review time to do one we will do it but this is probably going to take a lot of time to put her together so let's get right to it let's take a look at the sprues before we assemble her so here they are two sprues right here boom uh, very 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 large components here and i'm sure there's all those snake pieces here on somewhere yeah it looks like those heads oh those oh okay cool let's well let's jump into it because now i'm getting now i'm getting more and more excited to actually build this model when i started seeing it there i was a little apprehensive i was like man these assemblies have a lot of parts it's gonna be very fiddly but now when we get to the spirit it does not look to be the case that's great so the snake heads look to be of a pretty workable size here and very well detailed as well there they are right there there's her head and i can't tell I would imagine that's the one for the Shadow Queen form. Bottom of the bottom half of the torso there. And the detail on this looks very good. Very, very good. Very pronounced. Very cut. Very cool. And there's her art render. Art renderer. I'm just taking it all back. Look at the detail with the elven glyphs. Oh, on all sorts of skulls and such on the uh, on the pillar here. And there's those two nubs where she's going to lock into. So I guess theoretically you could build it without gluing it in and paint it separate if you wanted to do this like a, uh, a granite. But we'll find out in a second when we put it together. And there's the nubs on the back that look like they will interface as well with to provide additional support. I had to guess. That's what it looks like from this one. Some of the outside nubs that are probably going to lock into one place there and the other sprue lots of detail here there's a textured base the one of the hair stacks one of many hair stacks <laughs> and then yep there's a smaller head there so that's um, that's pretty pretty doable as far as size wise and texture for the shadow queen base the wings this is all looking very good and there's enough divot i feel like in these in these wings right here that you could actually detail that out and paint that out very well it doesn't look it looks like a very crisp detail and it would be easy to work with right there so that's good to see too i was kind of worried about that whether sometimes when you see these lines and such you're just like wait is that like manufactured or is that actually you know with the paint strokes 
themselves but you can see that it's kind of a little bit of both right there but for the most part it looks to be following along with the interior detail let's check the inside of the wing. yeah a lot more detail on the inside of the wing there so that's uh that's pretty cool there's her feet nice okay i'm stoked let's get her built and start seeing how big she really is and there she is look at that incredible model wow it it's one thing to see the sprues and see the instructions and then actually hold it in your hands having you put it together to see exactly all of the things about how it goes together and how clever games workshop is with their assembly now i will tell you this you have to be super careful when you're putting the foundation of the tail together i got a little off kilter here and it really cost me up here cost a lot of work a lot of time and effort unfortunately so be very very careful when you're doing that now that being said all hope is not lost if you screw up the tail because these areas here clamp on left and right to cover up a lot of those um those seam lines and stuff so it actually kind of helped us right there with their their new way they designed everything and and are so clever about hiding the mold lines and such but i mean just incredible model the detail on the scales all the runes and everything here i mean just the way the snake heads go together and their intricate little you know whatever those talons are i guess fangs we'll go with fangs <laughs> and everything it's just i mean it just blew me away now one bad thing about this model is there's no way to really do it in assemblies you have to put it all together and i still got some cleanup work to do i'm gonna have to do some gap filling with some vallejo plastic putty here and some scraping it down but i just wanted to knock this video out and get on with the rest of my day here so we uh so we cut a few corners you know not my not my best work that's for sure but i'm just letting you know ahead of time now back here where she's got these huge muscles she hobbies really strong you can't you know you got to glue all this together at this point so really you can't do anything except for keep it off the base which we did right here and one of the other gotchas i want to draw your attention to is it doesn't connect up flush with this and i know it's hard to see and i didn't even notice it at first i was like why isn't this working and then i went and looked at it and i was like oh okay it it crops down because she actually uses her uh, her bulk to kind of support some of it so when you can keep these two parts separate and then of course glue this down to the base at some point but she's going to go on like that and then the tail actually does some of the support which is really um really kind of cool so there it is with the base on there and you can kind of get a feel for um you know exactly how it's all going to go together and overall yeah this is a 100 mil base here so just to give you an idea of how she stacks up with some of the other models that are out there, we've got, well, first off, the other big lady, Alariel, and she, well, there's no comparison. Alariel is definitely the bigger of the two for sure right there. I mean, just the whole size of the base, not to mention, notwithstanding the fact that the that the model itself is just taller and more girthier right there which is probably has a lot to do with why the two models are actually in here that we talked about earlier and there's the other model on the 40 mil base so she does seem you know when they're standing next to each other it's kind of interesting like she's not that much bigger just like they said in the preview she's about three times as tall as her uh, uh, smaller self right here okay so that's kind of interesting to see the, the dynamic of that. Now, when we compare her up to, say, something that's going to be about Lord Celestin size, which I don't have a Lord Celestin on me, but I do know he is about this size, give or take, probably about an inch taller. So she is going to be about the size of a Lord Celestin. For sure, there's a you know tree ancient right there. And then our buddy right here, Bandis Hammerhands. Only comes up to her hips. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Guy crazy. And Big Fatty will probably give her a little bit more run for her money. But uh, but yeah, doesn't come quite that far up to our Frost Lord right here. So there it is. Gorgeous, gorgeous model. Very exciting design. But take my advice, take it slow. Make sure all your pieces are interlocking together. You know, dry fit everything before you start gluing things down because this tail section, while it is very, very dynamic and very 
uh, forward thinking in its design, and I love the possibilities with future kits, i.e. Fulgrim, um, it can get away from you pretty quick. So just a little bit of advice right there, but you can probably tighten it up up here a little bit with that cape, which is probably going to need a little bit of gap filler, regardless of if we, we had uh, kind of gotten a little off track there ourselves. But that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed our unboxing and build of both Marathis here and some size comparisons to some of the other models that we are a bit more familiar with out there. So make sure to work out those hobby muscles, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications to be the very first to like and comment on all our videos. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.